Be sure to subscribe to Globetrotting if you haven't already, it would mean a lot. Founded in 2014, Boom Supersonic makes headlines for so many different reasons, but ultimately its vision has been what has given it a name to make supersonic travel mainstream again, much like Concorde did in its own time, but with modern advancements, sustainability at its forefront, and to generally be a more attractive option for airlines. The birth of Boom Supersonic really came from its founder and leader's passion for aviation, but also the belief that there could be a means to offer affordable and sustainable supersonic travel. His ambition led to the establishment of this company, where focus was yes, on creating a high-speed aircraft, but one that was going to be viable for attaining supersonic travel. Overture, which is the company's flagship aircraft yet to be built, will look to embody some of these ambitions alongside many more. But there's a lot to explore in relation to this company. There are concerns and a whole lot more, and that's what I'll get into in today's proceedings. When looking at the last 10 years now of Boom Supersonic, a lot has happened. One of the more fantastic achievements for them actually has come in the last month or so at the time of recording, with the completion of of their construction in Greensboro, North Carolina of the Super Factory. This is a state-of-the-art facility, and it's going to be pivotal in producing Overture aircraft. The Super Factory is designed to streamline manufacturing. This goes from your assembling to delivery, and in the future, if Boom Supersonic deems worth their while, they've already outlined plans to expand this Super Factory further. This would enable higher annual production levels. But if you're really looking at it from a grounded perspective, it gives them a hub to be able to build Overture and move into the next step of their business. When you also understand that the facility will have a delivery center also present, it means getting these planes off to customers should be easy too. But as for Overture, I've said it a lot, what does it actually promise? Well, bar being designed purely to bring back supersonic travel, it hopes to have a range of 4,250 nautical miles, fly Mach 1.7, and be able to halve times of travel between key markets, including that of transatlantic locations, basically looking at getting you from, say, the UK to the east coast of North America in time for lunch, and then back home for dinner, back in the UK. Depending on the layout selected, the aircraft will also be able to offer customers somewhat of a premium capacity that isn't necessarily too small, but isn't necessarily too large. While we've seen their CEO and founder state on several occasions that he would want the pricing of tickets to be quite low and therefore attainable for most, that, according to analysts, probably will not be able to take place as customers will look to need to cover costs associated with operating the aircraft and pricing these tickets it's a little bit higher. Several airlines have actually already expressed their interest in Overture and placed what you may call pre-orders. Notably among these are the likes of United Airlines, American Airlines, and even over in Asia, Japan Airlines. They've all signed agreements with Boom. However, and this is a massive however, the nature of these contracts has definitely brought up a lot of discussion amongst many, whether it be people in our wonderful community or going as far as analysts who study the industry with a fine comb. Why is there so much focus on the contracts? Because while these agreements are fantastic for Boom and back the company, they are often really reliant on the success of Overture. And remember, this wouldn't be the first prospective aircraft hoping to redefine the aviation industry with new tech, and airlines that announce orders do so with a view of also looking good to their shareholders, and in an era where innovation is so important, is it really any shock that companies may look to invest in the next era of flight, even if it is not necessarily proven? Probably not. Will these companies fly the plane? Maybe the bigger question is, will Overture actually fly? Either way, their purchases, like I said, that can look good and show the airline in question is forward thinking. But what may not be publicly disclosed is that there'll be ways out of this contract quite easily. There's absolutely no way airlines would take on such a big risk for an unproven company and aircraft that would put them into financial turmoil, especially not companies like the three I mentioned, which are by no means small. 
Despite the enthusiasm, industry analysts remain cautious, and I'd argue many of you just watching this video are also cautious. All this stems from many factors. Firstly, let's take a look at technical challenges. Developing a new supersonic aircraft is not easy. I don't think I'd be able to do it, and probably you not either. While Boom has a fantastic team that are helping move through and navigate these challenges, there's a lot to consider, and look no further than also the regulatory hurdles. In the last five years or so, the way in which aircraft are certified has completely changed, and even established plane makers face challenges with proven aircraft. So imagine now for a supersonic jet, well, it's going to be a lot more more profound. Second, the financial aspect of such an ambitious project is something to be considered. Developing, producing, and certifying a new aircraft does require capital. While Boom has secured investments, the scale of funding to actually bring Overture to market at a rate that Boom would like and also be profitable is something analysts and insiders have publicly feared. It becomes more of a question of at this stage, how far can the plane maker go for many? To mitigate though some of the risks, Boom actually worked with a demonstrator. It's known as the XB-1 or Baby Boom, and it is a smaller jet that acts as a testbed for a lot of these technologies and also principles that should be seen in the full-scale overture. While delayed, the plane was actually successfully able to operate its first flight in the last year. So really the past 12 months have actually been quite big for Boom in progressing, but they still have so much more they need to do. When you also consider the massive redesign we saw to Overture in the last 24 months and the delays in getting certification for the XB-1, the really ambitious timeline for eventually getting Overture in the skies is something many would question. As of 2024, the company aims to begin production shortly, with first deliveries targeted for 2029. Meeting those deadlines like I touched on are going to be difficult. Analysts I've had the chance to speak to argue that certification challenges may very well delay Boom's timeline, but that is assuming that all the previous challenges I mentioned don't impact them so severely. Beyond challenges, Boom also needs to show that there's a business case for Overture. Reportedly, Boom wants to see Overtures flying worldwide by the 2030s and believes that there is a strong business case for it, but that's yet to be really proven. To a certain extent, that is also to be expected. The plane isn't flying yet, and it would be a significant risk for any customer to take on. Actually, look no further than Delta, who have made it very clear that they will not proceed to pre-order this plane like their US airline counterparts. Why? Well, Ed Bastian in the last few years has not been afraid to say that he believes there are too big of risks associated. And for a company like Boom Supersonic, it's always left them with more questions than answers, which means any kind of purchase is a risk. And they'd rather focus on things that are not going to offer as big of a potential downside. Airlines need to assess whether the demand for this faster travel can really justify the costs of operating. And really, for a more grounded view like I touched on with the Super Factory, can Boom actually get this plane in the sky and to a point where it is adopted by airlines? What are your thoughts on the company? Are you maybe surprised by the last 12 months and all the partnerships they've signed as well as the progress they have made? Are you still wary of what, say, the next couple of years will hold? And do you believe they'll be able to really follow through with all their ambitions? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on Globetrotting. It is certainly appreciated. I hope you'll take care and be safe. And I'll see you in a couple of days for some more aviation analysis. And we'll fly.